Welcome to the Empowered Embodiment Revolution, where women leaders reveal how to liberate yourself from body battles so you can follow your heart, own your power, and shine in the world. I'm Darlene Downing, and I am your host for this event, and I am thrilled and delighted to be here with you today. I have with me the strong, deeply authentic, and heart-centered Chrissy Key Rollins, Chrissy and I met at a healers networking event well, was a while back, and I remember immediately admiring her, her deep personal presence and confidence that was blended with this beautiful humbleness. And I, I remember feeling I could just so trust her, you know. And since that initial meeting, we've had the opportunity to deepen our relationship, and I am just. So excited to share her with you today. Pussy Key Rollins is a wife, a mother, a nationally certified licensed massage and bodywork therapist, nutritional cleansing coach, and certified intrinsic coach, specializing in relationships. She began her natural healing journey in December of 2001, and over the years, her passion for discovering the true meaning of health and how it is naturally achieved has only grown stronger. Chrissy feels blessed and honored to offer people what she believes to be a blueprint for a solid foundation for living a balanced, fulfilling life of peace, bliss, and ease. She combines her expertise in relieving physical and emotional discomfort to assist in creating balance and transforming lives for those seeking positive change, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Together, she and her clients co-create personalized plans for success, aligning clients with their life's purpose, and ultimately living the life they deserve, with a focus on getting out of the head into the body and living from the heart. So welcome, Chrissy. I am just so, so happy that you're here today. Thank you for being part of this conversation. Absolutely, Darlene, it is my, my highest honor and blessing to be able to share my message and connect with other women and help them to get empowered through their body. So thank you for your kind words and thank you for allowing me to share today. Yes, how does it get any better than this, right? <laughs> yes, seriously. So we've been starting the conversation off with the theme of what this summit is all about. I've been asking each of the speakers to share their unique perspective. So I would love to get yours. Um, how do you define empowered embodiment? Empowered embodiment to me means, first off, being comfortable in our own skin. I spent 30 years of my life not being comfortable with who I was, feeling that I was wrong because I didn't measure up to some conceived notion that I had in my mind over over what beauty was, what a woman was, and I just I just always felt like I came up short in pretty much every every area of who I was. So the first thing that really comes to my mind is learning how to be and becoming comfortable in our own skin. And then for myself, it really takes it to another level of being able to not only be comfortable in our skin, but also become in tuned with our body and be able to use our body as a tool to navigate this world that we live in. I love and that's what I, I focus on. Go ahead. Oh, that's it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You got to watch this hangout because the delay can be a little bit funny. So I'm think I want to make sure that you were complete. I love that. I um, I too was not comfortable in my skin, and the freedom that comes when you get to that place is truly empowering in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And and then I love that you have are deepening that, which I, I feel that this summit is about too. It's not just about losing weight and you know, or having more energy, and, and those are beautiful uh, things to, to want to have, and, and it's deeper than that of how can we more fully be ourselves and show up in the world by connecting to the body's wisdom. So thank you for, for bringing that to the conversation. Yes. So would you be willing to share with us what your body journey has been, um, what 
life was like before you were comfortable in your skin and, and what it was like that turning point where that transformed for you or that that initial thing that shifted. Absolutely. Absolutely. For me and I and I feel my story is is not uncommon. I feel that this is a struggle and I've learned that this is a struggle that many women, many people in general, but specifically women have gone through on their own and for me it was all of my life feeling that well actually I, I'll say it probably started around middle school I've done some reflecting over this and I remember in middle school was the first time that I started to feel that my body didn't measure up to what others expected and then quickly began to not measure up to what I expected and the journey to make myself become physically what I thought I needed them in order to be loved and accepted and admired and um, valuable really is what it came down to and for myself I remember you know comments being made I remember a girl asking me if I was pregnant when I was in the seventh grade and just being mortified and embarrassed that I was that that would even come out of somebody's mouth and I remember uh, things being said uh, a, a boy one day calling me chunky and I was like what is that I've never even heard that language before and that's where it became that I really started to judge myself as not being thin not being uh, whatever that image was that I had in my mind that uh, others expected and that's really where it began for me to um, dislike my body and think that it needed to change and that it wasn't right just simply how it was so on this was just from that point forward it was just a fact in my world that I was inadequate and and not enough and no matter what I tried no matter what kind of diets or exercising whatever it was that I tried to do uh, I could never get myself to look how the other girls looked or how I thought I needed to look to match up to the other girls and into my adulthood I carried this forward and uh, there was a point even where I started to work out and I started to educate myself on nutrition and I would change my body and I would work really hard I'd be very focused and I would do whatever it took to work towards a goal and even when I started to get into my smallest size like like size as far as clothing and weight that I had been before I still didn't see that when I looked in the mirror I still saw this fat girl who wasn't enough and I went through this journey in my um, just shortly I would say probably like the three years prior to where I started to really settle in and find my peace within I would be up 50 pounds and then down 50 pounds and then up 50 pounds and down 50 pounds and I would take me months of struggle and hard work and focus and disciplined eating and restrictive way of being and um, to hit this goal and then once I would hit the goal or come close to getting where I was aiming for I just quickly found myself right back where I started from and I remember the time that I really I had lost the most weight that I had ever lost I had been in the smallest size I was like in a size um, I had been, always been a size like 12 to 14 um, all through high school and beyond and um, when I got myself down to like a size 6 and I did things that most people wouldn't do <laughs> in the ways of eating and it was actually done in a very healthy way on the outside I was eating clean I was exercising I was doing all the things that one should do in order to um, th th what's really required in order to change our bodies and even in that size six I couldn't myself that way I still saw this fat girl again and people would say to me I don't think what you're doing is healthy and they, they expressed all kinds of concern for me and in my mind I was like what are they talking about I'm actually eating clean I am exercising I'm doing what you should do in order to really lose weight no tricks no gimmicks but what I learned later on is that what they were picking up on was my energy and my energy was imbalanced and I was not going about it 
in a healthy way, but I did not know that because I didn't know peace yet. And it took me finding my balance and finding my peace to look back and be like, wow, so I might have been eating healthily and I might have been exercising healthily, but inside I was still completely not healthy. It was completely out of balance. And I remember when I started to put the weight back on from being that size six and I felt so embarrassed. I felt like a failure. I felt like others were judging me. I know I feel the tears coming up uh, even as I as I recount this. I didn't want to go to work. I didn't want to see people. I didn't want them to see me. And I just remember feeling like such a failure. And it was definitely like the biggest head trip that I had gone through around my body. And it's still kind of, you know, once the week kind of came back on, and not kind of came back on, totally 100% came back on, because I'm sure those of you listening to this, you've done something similar. You put the blinders on, you make this restrictive lifestyle for yourself, and for myself, it wasn't something that was livable long term. It was an all or nothing. And once I switched from the all back into the nothing, all of it came back on, and then some. And then you know, I continued my journey, gaining weight, losing weight. And I hit this point, it was actually in um, August of 2009, that I was like, you know what, I know what to do. By this point, I had become a therapist, I had studied nutrition for a number of years, I had uh, gotten into exercising and learning how to move my body, how to gain muscle strength, all of that. And I was like, why is it that I know what to do? I know how I should eat, I know how I should exercise, but yet I do not do it consistently for myself. And I really got curious with that question and I was like, what is this? I don't know why I know what to do and why I cannot do it consistently and do not do it consistently for myself. So I, for the first time, took on, I took on a 24 week challenge that the nutritional company that I that I partner with and the products that I use for myself and I use with my clients, they put on this 24-week challenge. At the time, it was a 24-week challenge to use the product and do whatever changes to yourself physically, emotionally, spiritually in order to create and transform your body and your life. And I took on this challenge, and this was the first time I ever took on an endeavor that dealt with my body, and I did not set a weight goal. I didn't have size of clothes that I was looking to go into. And my goal for this 24 weeks was just to completely surrender, follow the program, move my body and exercise the way that I knew would bring about results, completely detached from what the end result was physically. And instead, I focused for 24 weeks on my only goal was to figure out my stuff. Why is it that I had this influx going on? And at the time, I was in my late 20s, and I knew that I wanted to have a family at one point, at some point in my life. And I knew that I did not want to pass this discomfort, this inner turmoil, this dislike of who I was physically. I didn't want to pass that on to my kids. I didn't want to have my children watch me open cabinets and have this inner turmoil over eating. I didn't want them to see me fluctuate with my weight. I didn't want them to see me look at myself in the mirror and not like who I was. And I certainly didn't want to pass that on to them to where they would be in their 20s having the same internal and external struggle in their life. So I said, okay, 24 weeks, I'm going to surrender, follow what I know works for the physical, and I'm going to figure out what's going on inside. And this was, unbeknownst to me, <laughs> exactly all that I needed to do was just to ask that question and to really surrender myself to what the answer would be. So I, um, if, if it's okay, I'll just kind of yeah. go on from there. So that was the beginning for me. And what I did, uh, it was the first time that I really realized that I was out of integrity with myself and my beliefs. Now I had for years carried the belief and would tell anybody at any time that I believe that everything happens for a reason. That we're part of this big divine plan, this big overall like picture that we're a part of, and that every piece of this puzzle that makes up the picture has a purpose, has a reason. We don't always know what it is, but um, regardless of what it is, 
it's perfection and there's a reason and a purpose behind it and I realized that I had this belief but yet I was still making myself wrong I was still wrong for being how and who I was so I realized that there was a conflict and I realized that um, and this happened pretty shortly as I began my journey and um, what happened was that I started getting these insights and this clarity that I had never had before and the thing that hit me was if I believe in this divine perfection and I'm part of this big plan then I too must be perfection also and I also realized for the first time that there wasn't like any other piece of the puzzle that is like me and it was the first time and here I am almost 30 years old and it's the first time that I realized that I cannot physically change myself to look like anybody else because I'm not them yeah. and I realized my unique individualness that I have and you know maybe if there was like 75 other Chrissy Keys running around in the world I might have been just like the extra one that slipped in but no I'm the only one and you can't it, it was just like this revelation that I had you couldn't put me next to another me and show me how I was too fat and my thighs were too big and my stomach was too big so since there was no other me to compare myself to why was I making myself wrong and if I'm part of this perfection and this is exactly how I was created maybe I wasn't wrong maybe I was perfect exactly how I was so it was the first time that I took a look at myself in the mirror and I said okay if this is the perfect package for Chrissy Key I'm now Chrissy Key Rollins but at the time Chrissy Key if this is what God gave me to work with creator gave me source wherever I came from if this is what I was given to work with and I'm part of this perfection maybe exactly how I am is exactly how I'm supposed to be and if this is what I got to work with I better figure out how to like it and not make it wrong so I remember standing and looking at myself in a full-length mirror and it was the first time that I looked at myself at least since seventh grade if not earlier than that and I didn't make a single curve roll ripple wrong I said wow. this is what I got that is this is what I got oh my gosh and yeah go ahead yeah so I decided moving forward if I, all I was going to do was focus on what I knew I had all this knowledge about the body and nutrition and how it works and how it all comes together so I was going to make my focus that I was going to focus on what I was eating what I was putting into my body how I was moving my body and whatever the physical result was of that if I was destined to be a size 12 and I don't even know what I weighed at the time you know just say size 12 and 185 pounds for the rest of my life if that's what I was destined to be physically on the outside I would learn to accept that knowing that I'm feeding myself the best nutrition that I can and moving my body how it needs to be moved and then that really was like the tipping point into what I call you know really discovering the divine blueprint and understanding that instead of looking to change things physically outside I was going to just focus on following this divine blueprint that we're given we are given food from this earth that is full of nutrients that when we put it into this body it thrives so I was going to get past tricking myself into thinking all these processed foods were actually foods they're not foods they're just food products and I was going to just honor my creator by honoring the gift that my physical body is to carry my soul around in and I also carried another belief that we're full of limitless potential and that we're all here for a purpose and a reason and it occurred to me that if I'm not even giving myself following that divine blueprint the basics on how this human physical body was is uh, created to thrive how will I ever reach my full potential if I'm not even doing that piece of the puzzle and this was within like the first two or three weeks of me taking on this challenge that all these insights started coming and I really believe 
that what helped to kind of clear the vessel to where I could get what I call divine downloads because this stuff I'd never thought these thoughts before they had never occurred to me before and I believe part of the reason that they surfaced is, is one that I asked I just asked I'm sure we're all familiar with the saying seek and you shall find ask and the answer will be given to you I asked why do I have this going on and two, I surrendered and I started following that divine blueprint. And the system that I followed was a nutritional cleansing system. So not only was my body releasing stored toxins and unwanted stuff that really wasn't serving my body, I was removing a lot of toxic uh, energy from myself and I was creating way for these nutrients to come in. And I believe that once we can eliminate the stuff that's holding us back, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, all of it. When we can eliminate what is holding us back and then simultaneously flood ourselves with what we were designed to receive, nutritionally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, all of it, then we can really start to tap into our divine potential and that's where it all begins. And for me, it was just that perfect storm. I didn't even know. Had I known that I was that I was actually going to be experiencing this and going through this, I would have like journaled every day and really documented my experience, but I had no idea that this is what was going to happen. Wow. So that happened right at the beginning and then it all just kind of culminated from there. Well, that is, so there's so much about what I, I, I love so much of what you shared. Um, first of all, thank you for being so vulnerable and sharing like just what you had experienced, feeling like you weren't enough, that mm -hmm. there was something wrong with you. And if there's anything that the listeners take away from this, I want I want you to know that you are not alone in feeling this. And I don't care what size you are, what you weigh, that most of us feel like we're not enough because we are surrounded by messages that tell us this so that we'll buy products. And what Thank you so much for sharing that. And then the other thing that I love that you shared, so much I loved that you shared, um, when you wanted to figure this out and you chose to not have any requirements of yourself, no numbers, you know, with sizes or weight, and you surrendered to receiving the guidance that you were seeking, you know, that, I mean, you what that says to me is you no longer accepted what was being told to you externally and you came within and you started asking questions and that was yeah. yeah that was my journey as well and that was what it took for me to separate myself from that there there is nothing wrong with you know there's nothing wrong with me or my body um, it was what I was believing that was what was messing me up so I, I love that. Absolutely. Yeah, and I and I have to say, Darlene, I mean, al although I can remember a couple things being said to me in middle school, I can't even tell you where the rest of these stories came from. They were just created, created in my mind, again, influenced by society and the pictures that were shown. And because um, I, re I just remember, like, just even when I was like that size six and so healthy and so fit, just really hating that reflection because I didn't look like Gabrielle Reese, <laughs> who was in my mind like the ideal woman. And I just thought if I just kept eating right and I just kept exercising that I could get that body just like her. And it was just such a journey to nowhere. And I'll say too that when I started this journey and you know my quest was to, to figure out my stuff I wanted to know where it came from. You know, why do I just start eating at night and keep on eating until I fall asleep? And why do I, you know, have these unhealthy habits and um, non-serving habits? Where does this come from? You know, my mind's like, did I get molested as a child? Did I get abused as a child? You know, my mind wanted to know the answers. Where did this come from? What made me wrong? What what messed me up? And I had to surrender, not knowing the answer to just following what I knew worked. So that's something that I work with my clients now, you know, give up having to know all the answers before you get started. And start where you are by applying what you do know and allow the rest to be unfolded. Because to this day, I, I can take guesses over where my stuff came from, but I really don't know. I, I can't put my finger on 
oh, this was the day or this was the turning point. And when we hold ourselves back from doing the things that we know will really honor ourselves, and for me, it was, I had to get beyond myself. I had to, when I couldn't show up and do it for Chrissy, I showed up and did it for my creator. I decided just to be quite literally a good steward of what I'd been given. And I did it as a way to honor my creator. So that's something else that I work with people on is getting out of doing things for you and instead doing them for something beyond you. I knew by taking on this journey, not only would I be a better mother and be able to uh, assist my future children, but that I would also, by really tapping in and unlocking my potential and getting clear about what my purpose is, that I would somehow be able to serve others. And now all of this has led into the practice that I have now and the services that I provide for people. And it's my journey and my struggle that has allowed me to serve others. It doesn't even have to be a body struggle. Anybody who has struggled, anybody who has dealt with heartache, anybody who has um, any kind of challenge that they faced in life, I'm now able to relate to them in a way that I couldn't prior to taking this on. And it took me um, really, you know, simultaneously living beyond myself and living for myself in a way that I just had never done before. Mm, that's, that's so awesome, you know, and a, a question came to me, somebody that's in my community, I put it out to everybody, like what is it that isn't working for your body that you would like to see shift? And when you were speaking, it sounds like you were having a similar struggle that she was. She says that she feels great in her body, but she still thinks of herself as the former fat girl. And I remember mm. you mentioning something to that effect before. And I have my own thoughts on um, how she could shift this, and I would love for you to contribute if there's something that you can offer her to get past that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can relate because I can, I totally see myself as the girl who used to be fat. And what was interesting is that the more peace that I find within, the more I can look at old pictures of myself and see that I wasn't fat, I just had a bunch of skinny friends. I had friends that were size two and size zero that were petite. And I'm tall. I'm almost 5'9". So I'm going to, even at like my the smallest that I ever got to, which was a size four, which is crazy to me because I never even thought that that would... I, that was just never even somewhere that my mind ever went. And I got to the size four by being just very, very consistent with my cleansing and with what I was eating. I got very clean with how I eat. Um, I, I'm obviously not, I'm sure you can tell, but just looking at me, I'm not currently a size four. I'm more like a size eight, size 10. I'm also kind of a new mom, so I don't know where my body's going to settle overall. Um, but I don't hold myself to those restrictive spaces anymore and I feel like I'm getting off tangent but it is all for a reason <laughs> so being able the more that you get to your peace on the inside the more you're going to be able to release those stories that you're still holding on to yourself so it would I would definitely uh, I think be beneficial to to work with a coach or somebody who can help you kind of still dig into what it is that you're holding on to on the inside that's stopping you from being able to accept yourself on the outside and what I love about being formally a, a fat girl or at least viewing myself as a fat girl because I show some people my before picture and they're like what are you talking about I thought you said you were fat because they don't view a size 12 size 14 as somebody who's fat I know lots of uh, overweight women that would love to be a size 12 and a size 14 and that's like kind of average and normal but to me it was fat because all my size 0 and size 2 friends were tiny and I was always big so uh, it allows me to have a heart of compassion for anybody who is heavier or overweight. I understand what it's like. And even if I don't know what it's like to be 350 pounds, I know what it's like on the inside. And I think that that, that gives us a unique gift, again, of compassion to be able to relate to people who are going through the same struggle or going through similar struggles. And for me, it was just simply giving up self-judgment and again really owning the fact there's no other Chrissy 
you cannot ever tell me that I am fat because you don't know, you can't put me next to another me. You can't do it. So I think just really owning that individuality and just saying this is who I am because I mean I definitely do not have like a model perfect body right now. I am definitely not in the best physical fitness of my life, but I love who I am and I'm okay because I don't judge myself anymore and giving up that judgment allows me to dress B, do interviews without makeup. I was on television and did it on a, a local, like actually a national television station, but here locally, and I didn't put on any makeup before going on TV because I was like, why would I do that? If you hire me as a coach, I'm not going to show up with makeup, so why am I going to do that? But it takes me being okay with me because now that I give up self-judgment, other people, they most likely judge me, but I have no idea that it happens because I'm not judging me. I believe all judgment is just a projection and a reflection of our own self-judgment. And that's what I hear when you say the, the question asker that you reference from the community, that that's what she's doing is still holding on to some self-judgment. So I would work on that because there's not ever going to be anything that gets removed on the outside that's going to bring that peace to you on the inside. And I don't think you're going to hit a spot physically that you're going to be able to let that go. It's still just um, some kind of uh, lack of self-forgiveness or releasing of self-judgment that would be where I would start if I was to work one-on-one -on -one with somebody like that. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, those are wise words. And we touched on it with how we spoke before about you can be all different sizes and you can still have that internal belief that there's something wrong with you and then you're judging yourself. And mm -hmm. um, thank you also for bringing to the conversation that what we could call fat, it's all relative, right? Like what somebody, what feels heavy to somebody is, is great for somebody else and can, you know, wouldn't it be awesome if we all like knew what our bodies naturally were to be our natural set point and we were seeing ourselves as that perfect us that you had that divine download on which I mean I love that I love that you got that awareness and then I mean my heart was so happy when you were sharing that you were able to stand in front of the mirror without any judgment and just look at that beautiful body that you've been given as a gift it is a sacred gift that we're stewards of and when you start seeing your body that way, it, it really is a game changer, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. It, it was huge. I mean, I mean that, that day I can still see the image in my mind of standing in front of my full-length mirror, completely nude, nothing on, and really being okay with what I saw. Now, having that awareness is, is just the tip of the iceberg. I still had weeds weeks and months and years of peeling back the layers of conditional thoughts and habits and ways of being internally to where I can like really be at peace with who I am. So as I went through that journey, you know, I released in that 24 weeks, I released 49 pounds and 62 and a quarter inches in that 24 week period. And I was down to a size four, which blew my mind. I mean, again blew my mind on once I you know continue my journey um, you know release some of my habits of exercising quite as often allowed some of the non-serving foods to come back in which uh, I'd like to touch on as well is um, uh, the foods that we eat what allowed me to shift and release some of them is that I found through um, education and through my own personal experimenting, some of the foods that we eat absolutely attribute to some of the negative thinking that we have, some of the emotional struggles and some of the, the you know more depressed feelings and down feelings that we can get are absolutely correlated with the foods that we eat. So when I was able to make that connection and I realized that you know part of the mental chatter that's holding me back in life is being induced by the pizza that I ate you know two nights before, that was a big wake up call for me too allow me to release things. So not to say that I don't eat those things, but as I've put them back into my life in a conscious way, which is big difference, I don't mindlessly eat food and I'm not eating the guilt 
that I used to eat and the self-judgment that I used to eat, since I've been able to let that go and allow some of these foods to come back in my life, they don't hit me quite as hard. They don't affect me quite as much. And, and again, I think that goes with the energetic balancing and the clearing of um, non-serving beliefs. But as that has come back into my life and the scale has gone back up from the, I think it was uh, maybe around like 150. 51 pounds or something like that that I was at the very lowest as that scale went back up and as the size went back up I was okay I didn't make myself wrong and I was okay that I don't have this perfect body because I got to a point where I really own the fact and this is something that that carries me through to this day is that there's nothing that can be added to me or taken away from me that will ever change my value and being able to know that and not only know it like consciously that again. Okay, there's nothing, and this goes this this goes for everybody. It's not just me. There is nothing that can be added to you or taken away from you that will ever change your value, ever. And that goes for a size on on your uh, label of your clothes. It goes for a number on your scale. It goes for anything in life. There's nothing that can be added to you or taken away from you that will ever change your value. You are beyond invaluable that just doesn't even encompass how priceless and meaningful and purposeful and exactly perfect that you are so as the pounds and the inches came back on to a degree I think that there's a line that I've crossed that I just will never go back over again there's some changes that I've made um, conscious choices uh, conscious, conscious choices that I've made uh, I, I don't consume meat I'm a vegetarian and um, I maintain a nutritional cleansing lifestyle, which is very important to me. And so certain things that I do in my life that I'll just, I'll just until further notice, this is what I'm going to be doing, that I think there's a line that I won't cross again. And that's because, just because I love myself. And I love what it is, this life that we're given. And I want to feel good and be able to have ease in all aspects of my life, and that includes my physical world as well. But being able to, you know, not no longer be a size four and be perfectly fine with that, because honestly, if I have to be that strict in my lifestyle in order to maintain that size, that's obviously not where I'm supposed to be. I would rather live life how I enjoy living life, consciously consuming foods and doing things to my body that that I know um, will lead to the outcomes that I desire and I'm at peace with this where I'm at who knows once I'm done having babies who knows if I'll get into another uh, a more uh, consistent fitness regimen and you know who knows what the future holds for me but uh, just having that peace because I heard I heard this said in in I'm sure somebody else out there has heard this saying that nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. I've heard people that are dieting say that. Yeah. I say nothing tastes as good as peace of mind feels. I'm not at all interested in perfection. I'm not at all interested in being skinny or thin. What I'm interested in is peace inside and out. And that what my goal is now and that's what I want to pass on to my daughter who's amazing and being raised <laughs> vegetarian as well until she's old enough to make the conscious decision on if she wants to put meat into her body and participate in the industry and all of that um, but that's that's my goal is to be able to always honor and bring forth her perfection just simply being who she is there's no right or wrong to it there's no comparison and we have to give up that comparison give up those judgments and um, I think that's really what brings that peace on the inside and I, now I just I, I look at it as trading up addictions and I do a lot of work with people on emotional addictions and uh, using our emotions as a tool and a guide in life and I've just traded up an addiction for that chaos and that drama and that inner turmoil to one of peace and now I do whatever it takes to get to that piece. And um, that that's that's what my goal is, not, not that size, not that outside reflection. And I believe that once we have that piece on the inside, that's what gets reflected out. Because I, I had mentioned before how I had done the, the really restrictive dieting and got down to a size 6. Then I did this other uh, journey and really got to the root of what was imbalanced on the inside got down to a size four and people always said to me you look amazing you look great 
Not one person said, you don't look healthy, I'm concerned about what you're doing. And I know it's because my energy shifted. And what they were picking up on is that energy. And that's what I carry forward now. So who cares if I'm a size 8 or a size 10 or I weigh 160 or 175 or 185? It doesn't matter. What matters is that what's going on on the inside emotionally and spiritually and energetically, and that's what gets projected on the outside. Absolutely, and your daughter is so lucky to have you as a role model in her life for trading in, you know, feeling skinny for feeling peace. Mm -hmm. That's very powerful, and I, I, lo I love it. You know, um, I know that you're a big proponent of getting out of the head and into the body and mm -hmm. listening to your heart. Um, do you want to just speak about that really quickly? Absolutely, absolutely. So all of this just really unlocked the next level of, of purpose in my life. And once I, what even led me to taking on this challenge was just being introduced to and under the mentorship of some of the most amazing people that I'm so blessed to have the people that have come into my life that have helped me kind of put all these pieces together. Now, now I did the work and, you know, we all have to do the work, but these tools were given and, and instead of carrying around these tools, I started to put them to work in my life and the results started showing up physically, emotionally, spiritually, all of it. So what start what I really tapped into is that part of my gift and my purpose was to pass these tools on to other people. And as I started in my own way and with my own um, flair, I guess you'd say, started relating this message to other people, when I sat back and I looked at the body of work that I created, I created some workshops series into a retreat series and what I found was this consistent theme of getting out of our head shifting the relationship that we have with our mind uh, unlocking and, and discovering the the subconscious stories that we're carrying around and living living by in our life so getting out of the head and getting into the body so I believe that a lot of us escape what's happening down here. We don't like the emotions that we're feeling. We don't like the physical things that are going on. We're not comfortable in our own skin. So in order to not really feel and really be um, really locked into what's physically happening in our body, be it the extra weight or the uh, pent up emotions or what have you, we escape into our head and live life in our head. So what I found is that we have to get out of our head and get in our body, get into our body, what we're putting in it nutritionally, how we're treating ourselves physically, but also tap into what we're really feeling beyond the extra pounds, beyond perhaps the aches and pains to what emotions are going on inside of us. And when we can tap into what is happening emotionally, we tap into what I call like our, our our, our uh, divine navigation system, our inner GPS, mm -hmm. and our emotions are our guide to everything that's happening in our life. But we have to get out of our head and get into our body before we're ever going to be able to live life from our heart. And it's such a different way of approaching life. It's really... It's such a gift. I know, Darlene, you and I, we talk about all the time how blessed we are to, to be living the lives that we are in the service that we are, are providing. And it's such a gift to witness person after person transform their life by taking in these principles. Just being able to shift the relationship with their mind, get back into their body, both physically by flushing out the toxins. You know, we got to flush out the toxins in our mind. We also got to flush out the toxins that are in our body. We have to flood our mind and our thoughts and our emotions and our spiritual self with the proper nutrients the same way that we have to flood our body with the proper nutrients you know what really feeds you and what are you really feeding yourself that's a good question to ask yourself not only what are you feeding yourself for breakfast lunch dinner snacks what have you but what are you feeding yourself emotionally what are you feeding yourself spiritually so we have to get out of our head into our body and then from there we can start to live life from our heart where it's not about us and how we feel throughout the day and uh, what we feel like doing throughout the day but instead surrendering and doing and being all that we were designed and fully equipped perfectly made divinely purposely perfectly created for and live into our potential in life which really is all that we want to do anyway I mean that's it 
yes. you want to be fulfilled. That's what I think we're going. That's what we're going for when we're striving yeah. with staying out there. Is really just right. that connection to the heart. And the reason, the reason you feel dissatisfied in your life right now, the reason life is agitating you, is because it's supposed to. You're not living into your potential. You're not doing what you were designed, perfectly made to do, and fully equipped to do. That's why life is dissatisfying. That's why you have that dis dis ease in your mind and in your body is because you're not in alignment with what you were created for. That's why you want more. That's why you signed up for this summit. That's why you plug yourself into these things because you're looking for that thing. And yes, this external world can help to guide you in that direction, but it's all already inside you. And getting yourself aligned with somebody uh, who's living out their purpose like Darlene or myself or any of the amazing women that are contributing to this summit, and, and not just us, there's there's lots of us out there. We can be your guide and we can help you to get pointed in that right direction. But all that awesomeness, all that stuff that gets unlocked, it's inside of you. You're the one who brings it to the table. And just by watching the transformation that takes place, that's it's just the philosophy that I look to get out of your head into your body and start to live from your heart and that's where that's where the magic happens that's where it gets exciting and you can wake up in the morning and just burst into tears of gratitude for the life that you have that just you know a couple weeks couple months couple years ago you were judging and making wrong you know maybe it's your body maybe it's your life it can be all of it and and nothing nothing in past to change except for what you what you got going on on the inside. And I believe wholeheartedly, maybe it's just because of my own personal experience, maybe it's a fact, I don't know, that you cannot get into balance with one without getting into balance with all of it. So you have to get that balance with the physical side, which is why I'm such a big proponent and advocate for nutritional cleansing, because I think it really unlocks our physical potential, and that is the catalyst for unlocking the emotional and the spiritual potential as well. Uh, I don't even remember what your original question was or what we were saying, but <laughs> that's what came to me. Getting out of the head into the body so that you can be listen to your heart. And what I love that you brought to the conversation too is that it's ultimately, yes, we're here to share our stories and what it was that worked for us. And ultimately, the intention is that you know that you have all that you need inside and that it's, it's a... It's a look inside and going on that journey. And it is helpful to have someone as your guide, a coach, a mentor, a friend. Ultimately, though, you have all the answers. Like, they're in here, you know. And so that's why none of us are calling ourselves experts. We're not experts. We, we've just gone down this path of seeking the answers within to ultimately find what is the right way for us to go. Because we're all different, you know. And, and the, the, truth, the truth is a direct experience. The truth is experiential. So I am an expert in my truth and what I know to be true. And I claim the right, reserve the right to change that at any time, what I'm saying now. And what I love about the work that I do, and I think that anybody who's really bringing this authentic integrity to the table, it's not just words and concepts on a piece of paper, but it's stuff that we have applied in our life. So through my experience, what I bring to the table, this is my truth, and it is the experience that I have. And what I love about it, and just like anybody else out there, is that you can take this, put it to work in your life, and get your own results, get your own truth, and have your own experience with it. And that's where the magic happens. That's where the transformation happens. It's it's the difference of... Um, it's not about the information, it's about the transformation, and that happens with the application of the information. That's the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Wisdom is the application of the knowledge, and not just, you know, that surface, external, physical side of things, but the deep down inside in your, your core. I always point right to the center, uh, the, like the solar plexus area, the core. That's where it all lies, and whatever's happening there is what's happening around you. And if you want to change what's happening around you, you got to change what's happening here. And it can be tricky because we're used to listening to here. We got to learn how to get down into here and surrender what this is saying and accept that life is telling us everything that we need to know. Again, that discord, that dis-ease, that disharmony that you're experiencing, it's a cue. It's a cue. And it's just an opportunity to get yourself onto, you know, do a little course correct, 
get yourself on on track with what you are designed to and that's 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 the essence of what it is that I do with my clients every day is to teach you I don't know what the answers are I don't know what you need to be doing but you'll know based on how you feel but you're never gonna know if you're living all up here right and out here instead of coming inside beautiful I love it Oh, you're such a wise, wise woman, Chrissy. This has been is such an amazing conversation. So I've been asking all of our speakers uh, to offer to the listeners one of their favorite empowered embodiment tools, something practical that they could take away right after this conversation and apply it in their own lives, just like we said, so that they can have the direct experience for themselves and see the transformation that's possible. So what, what's your favorite empowered embodiment tool? This is the tool, this is my go-to, no matter what. It was pivotal for all the change that I have uh, experienced in being able to recondition myself, my thoughts, my habits, all of it. And it, again, just something that one of my mentors taught me, uh, along with there's never anything that can be added to you or taken away from you that ever change your value. This particular mentor also taught me that our breath is our only true possession. So I use my breath as a tool to come back into the present moment, to get myself back into my body and back into remembering that, okay, there's nothing that can be added to me or taken away from me that's ever going to change my value. My breath is my only true possession. And I use my breath to bring myself back into my body and into the present moment. And from there, I make a conscious choice on how I want to move forward. Because we're we're just in the habit of being how we're being. We're in the habit of thinking how we think, reacting how we think, how we uh, react in life. And in order to shift that, we have to bring again override that subconscious way of being and get into the conscious way of being. So I use my breath when I feel that emotions, the angst, all that stuff that I help people get in tune with. When I feel that rising up in my body, when I feel that that heat rising up in my body, and I feel myself <gasps> and getting ready to react in the situation. I use that breath, I feel it come into my body and back out again. And from there, I make a choice in how I want to move forward. Not in how I'm used to being, not based on how I feel in the moment, but make a choice that's in alignment with that that I really want, what I most desire, what I'm most committed to. And that's that's my tool. That's my anchor that brings me back to present. It reminds me that no matter what's happening out here, my value is never going to be increased or decreased based on it. And that, again, there's nothing that can be taken away from because I, I feel that most of that stuff it comes from a place of fear like subconsciously rooted in fear when that stuff starts to rise up in us so that just reminds me no matter what happens out here my only true possession is my breath and it's my centering point and it brings me right back to my core and yeah my just take that one deep centering breath is what it takes for me and breathe my way through it breathe through what I'm feeling in the moment the breath is so powerful that's the most practical way that I know to utilize it it is, and you know, it. Don't let the simplicity of it fool you. And what I love too is you getting, you know, saying those declarations to yourself. Um, will you say them one more time again? Yes. There's nothing that can be added to me or taken away from me that will ever change my value. Right. And my breath is my only true possession. Yes. That that just. And then from that point. It's, it's making that choice that's in alignment with where I desire to be, where I want to be, what, what I'm destined for, instead of how I feel in the moment or how I'm used to reacting. I think that adding that to it, it really magnifies what can support you with the breath. The breath keeps you from going into reaction. It gets you in your body. It, it provides a space for a conscious choice. And then, like, creating that intent of clarity, like, you know, this this is truth for me, not what's going on. And then moving forward, it's brilliant. I just love it. You're so wise. Thanks. I, I had good mentors. And again, it's just the application of the information and having the direct experience and, and um, just, just having that experience. That's what it's all about. You know, the truth that you know 
today is based on the experience that you've had in your life. And in order to change your truth, you have to change your experience. And that goes from, you know, looking to the people who have what you want, be it a physical, emotional, spiritual, whatever. Now, first of all, you're not ever going to have all those external things and feel what you think you're going to feel until you do the work on the inside. Um, but, you know, look to those. You know, it's, what you want is that peace, that experience that you think other people are having based on their life. And um, we have to emulate what they do. I mean, they're, they're our teachers and our leaders and our guides for a reason. And we just have to have the awareness to follow them and not just gather the information. I know so many people that are amazing and they carry around these like bags and buckets of tools and they don't implement them. They hand them out to everybody that they know. They know which ones to use in given situations. They're quick to pass them off to other people, but they're not applying them for themselves. Right. And that's, that's, where, that's where the magic happens. Nobody's going to rescue you. Nobody's going to save you. Nobody's going to pull you out of your life and change it for you. You have to do it yourself. You're the only one that you take with you everywhere that you go. It's obviously all up to you. Yeah. So thank you for your for your kind words. I appreciate the the wisdom. I feel blessed to be 35 years old and to be where I'm at emotionally, spiritually, physically uh, in my life. I love that I can raise my daughter from this perspective. And really all it says to me is that I just got more work to do. More work to do, and so does she. She has a lot of work to do if she's going to be raised by me. So I just I, I look to be a good steward of it and, and, and pay it forward. Pay it forward. I was gifted. I'm gifting it forward. Yeah, and and we're constantly evolving, right? We're always, mm -hmm. always on an evolving edge. Work so, in progress. Yeah, no matter. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you have provided so much amazing wisdom, and I know that you've extended your generosity and have offered a free gift to mm -hmm. all of the women who are listening. And we put a link right below the video here for you so that you can go and check that out. I'm going to turn the conversation over to Christy and let her share with you her generous gift and what it's all about. Absolutely, absolutely. So when I sat there and I thought to myself, I was like, okay, what will best serve this particular community? I'm, I'm having headset issues here. It's sliding off the back of my head, so forgive me. Just one moment. <laughs> it's all perfect. There we go. So I thought to myself, what will best serve this community of women? And my mind immediately went back to this teleseminar that I offered, gosh, I think it was around a year ago that I offered this teleseminar. And it is three mistakes that spiritual women make that causes you to fall out of faith. Because these three mistakes I made over and over and over again, and it would pull me right back out of faith. And regardless of how you view yourself on the spiritual side of things, I really encourage you to download this audio, give it a listen. I promise you, you're going to find some information in there that you're going to be able to take and apply into your own life. And I've learned for myself, it's, it's my faith that allows me to take that deep breath in my faith that there is nothing that can be added to me or taken away from me my faith that I am full of limitless divine potential that allows me to continue to move forward in my life so uh, about a year ago I put together this teleseminar that I want to gift to you to listen to uh, that really pinpoints three mistakes that you are likely making in your life and you know good little tips and tools on how to transform it in, in your life so you can you can go to the website uh, holisticrestoration.com just do a forward slash revolution since this is our empowered embodiment revolution and you can find that that free gift from me to you so so check it out and um, I'd love to hear your feedback your comments and anything that you're taking away from it but my gift to you and I, I appreciate you checking it out thank you so much Chrissy for all your generosity and I know that you've got some other really cool things going on too and I wanted just to give you a moment to share if someone's just so resonating with your story and how they would want to work more deeply with you, I, um, please let them know how they can do that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, of course, work with people one-on-one. -on -one. I do phone sessions, Skype sessions. Um, that's that's a great way if you really want to, like, you know, you took some convert some uh, points away from this conversation, or maybe from the 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 audio download, and you were like, okay, well, Chrissy, I got the concepts, but how do I apply it in this situation and in my particular situation? I always am open 
open to uh, taking on new clients. Right now, I do have some time available in my schedule uh, for some phone or for some Skype question or Skype sessions. Um, so here nationally or internationally if you're here local and want to meet one-on-one -on -one, that's always an option uh, another thing that I have going on right now that I'm really excited about so you know all this started coming to me and I was letting all my potential out and figuring out my purpose and I created the workshop series and that turned over to weekend retreat series and then I had a baby and so life kind of changed for me to where I can't just hop and go to the beach for the weekend and um, take that time so what I did was I took all that content and I have created a couple of what I call virtual workshop series they're basically like e-courses and I have two that I have completed in development right now one is called simply living from the heart which takes all those concepts of how to get out of your head into your body and start to live life from the heart and I have a second one called living your vision board and it's really focused on the practical steps of what it takes to take those pictures that we have posted on our vision boards and make them a reality into our life because as I'm sure most of us have learned, it's not just cutting out the pictures and taping them to the wall and looking at them every day that brings it into our life. This is the practical steps of what it takes. So both of these workshop series, they are great standalone, but I really encourage you if you really want to get into this and lay a solid foundation that you can stand on for the rest of your life, do them both. Do the living from the heart and then follow it up with living your vision board. Great content expanded upon. Again, you can do one or the other. They're great standalone, but both of them um, are a series of 12 audios that will deliver straight to your inbox once a week. And they're also coupled with a great 20 to 25 page action guide resource book that you can follow along, fill in some blanks, jot down some notes. And when you complete the series, not only you have lifetime access to the audios, but you also have that great resource guide that can serve you for, again, the rest of your life. All this stuff is just information. It's, it's the same thing that I just keep reapplying and reapplying and reapplying in my life. And um, I created those series. So no matter who you were and where you are, you can plug into that. And for participating in this amazing summit, I would be happy to pass along uh, some discounted savings for plugging into those e-courses. So when you go to uh, the website to download the audio, you'll see some information on the courses there as well. I just wanted to make a one-stop shop for everybody. You can find out information on the courses and you can also uh, take advantage of that discounted pricing for you for participating in the summit and uh, I have two other things that I have going on right now that I'm really excited about one is what I call the 30-day freedom challenge you can also find out about that on that same page um, or you can go to the limitlessmovement.com or 30 day freedom challenge .com, find out all about it but it's a 30 day it's an opportunity for you to take 30 days to focus on transforming your life physically emotionally spiritually financially however it is that you want to transform your life now of course your whole entire life is not going to change in that 30 days but what this 30 days will do is again it will lay down a solid foundation for you to build on moving forward in whatever change you want to do to make in your life. You know, you heard my story about the up 50 pounds, down 50 pounds, up 50 pounds, down 50 pounds. I was a master at creating change in my life, but not lasting change. Now I'm all about creating lasting change and helping you to do the same. And that's what all my programs are really um, built around. So 30 day freedom challenge is going on right now. It's going to be going on until December 14th of this year. Um, so definitely plug into that if you want to take advantage of that. Some really cool prizes that are out there and actually an opportunity to win up to $25,000. I mean, who couldn't use that? So definitely plug into that if that's something that speaks to you. And then the last thing that I have offer offering right now is that I have my first audio CD available. It's an hour-long disc called Key to Now unlocking the present moment and it is an hour of practical content on how you can really tap into and utilize the power that is only found in the present moment so that's available you can order that um, on my website you'll find all that information all this information is going to be on that one page that you go for the free download so check it out but you can order it online you can get the, the 
actual hard copy disc, or you can go online and also download the MP3s. So, so thank you for letting me share those. I'm so excited to be able to continue to offer such great gifts and be a mama too. So, thank yeah. you, Darlene, for this opportunity. Gosh, thank you so much for all that you brought to the conversation today, for your passion in supporting people and living their best life possible, for these gifts, for taking what pearls and tools have supported your life and putting them in a format that it's like a, you know, just practice these over and over again and you can receive this transformation for yourself too. I, I, and yes, yeah. thank you. So, so much. Absolutely. The vision that I had is to take away all the excuses. No matter where you're at physically in this world, no matter where you're at financially, you can plug into and start to create this lasting change in such an authentic way in your life. And that's what I, I held the vision for when I, as I create my programs. You know, there's different, you know, one on one working. If you want to work on your own, whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm here to serve, and it's my highest honor to do so. So, again, thank you for this opportunity, Darlene. Thank you, Chris. So grateful that you're in my life and just love what you're doing in service to the world. And I thank all of our listeners for being here today, for choosing this time for you, for opening yourself up to new possibilities with how you can experience empowered embodiment so that you can, can follow your heart, own your power, and shine in the world. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye, Chrissy. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.